or do you think that's hard? My name is Leanne McKinney and I am the coordinator of public school initiatives here at Washita. I've been doing this job for five years. Um, I'm a graduate of Washita um, back in 1995 with a degree actually in business um, and worked for quite a, eight and a half, nine years at that time. But I'm back for five years in this current position um, as coordinator of public school initiatives. My primary responsibilities are to recruit and train OBU student tutors to go into the public schools and tutor kids one-on-one -on -one through the America Reads and America Counts programs that we've been doing for 20 years now. And then also we've added some programs at a couple other schools that we've just been doing between three and five years. So, America Reads, America Counts usually involves about 30 to 35 tutors. That's about the right number to put in the two schools that we work with. More than that gets a little bit too much for them to work with scheduling. And then like I said, we've got a couple other programs. Overall, we've got about 70 tutors in the schools working with over 90 kids. I'm Taylor Wade. I'm a junior education major and I do reading counts. Not only do you get to impact somebody for their schoolwork, but you also get to impact them and how they get to live their life and they get to have another person in their life who just genuinely loves them and cares about them. I'm Paige Snow from Wiley, Texas. I'm a junior education major. Um, I participate with America Counts and I've been doing this for three years. I chose to do America Counts because it was one of my strong suits and I wanted to help children enjoy math like I did, um, especially if they were struggling with it. I wanted to be able to give them that hope that it will get better. Personally, I feel like I got a better understanding of the people of Arkadelphia. Um, there is this feel at Washita that kind of this is the only place around and we do have an entire city that we are in of people that are not involved in our lives. And I just feel like we need to reach out to them and understand because this is their city and this is where they are living and these kids, this is where they're growing up and we're here for four years. Um, so we don't get to see a lot of it and being in this program really helped me understand that these kids are just, they're going through a lot in their lives and it's hard for a lot of them and a lot of them have struggles at home or struggles especially in school and as a future educator it's been a great practice for me to see and it's been a reality check as a student as well. I know I was very fortunate growing up and I feel like a lot of us at Washita are very fortunate to be where we are now and that a lot of these kids around us are not as fortunate especially as I was growing up. So for me to sit here and go to Washita and live in the Washita bubble and not take the opportunity to go and make someone else's lives better is kind of ridiculous. Like we need to reach into the community and show people the love of Christ, show people that we care and there's someone who cares about them and it's not just their mom, it's not just their teacher. Like we don't get paid to do this and I wouldn't take money anyway, like I do it because I love these kids and want to reach into the community. And where do you put the change? Good job. How do you say it? Two dollars and thirty-seven cents. Good job. Let's do... The schools tell us which children they want us to work with. And so basically, um, I'll give you a little information about the kids that we're working with. Um, we're usually working with kids that I call bubble kids. So these are children who aren't in the very lowest percentiles as far as testing and classroom performance because usually those kids are flagged for significant levels of help beyond what we're doing. So we're usually working with what we call bubble kids. So these are kids that are the school has identified as below proficient. Um, but they're not low enough to get all that extra help. So this is a great group of kids to work with that don't normally get a lot of extra help. And so what they do is they look at test scores and classroom performance when they select them to go into our program. And then they look at those same indicators at the end of the year after they've been with us. And so test scores, classroom performance, all those indicators um, tell us that what we're doing works academically. Um, and then um, we get feedback from our teachers and our administrators in the schools um, they often will share with us the difference they see in attitude towards school or behavior in the classroom even with the kids that we work with because when you come to school knowing you're not going to do well, that makes school hard. And when we can kind of 
shift that a little bit where they feel like they know what they're doing and they're um, more likely to succeed, it changes how they view school. And so we get a lot of feedback from our teachers about a change in self-confidence and other types of behavior that they see as a result of working with our, our OBU students. So that's exciting. Um, we do a few things to evaluate the programs, how they've impacted the kids we work with, but also how they've impacted us. And um, what I see in my tutors is a new awareness um, about what some kids deal with outside of the classroom. Um, a new awareness about um, the needs that some students have that maybe our OB students hadn't been exposed to before. Um, I think our students also learn about themselves. I'll have them tell me, I've got more patience than I realized I have, or um, I can be creative when I need to. I didn't realize that I had that ability. Um, I think it develops a new awareness and compassion in our OBU students because they see a little different side of life than maybe what they've seen before.